great news regarding the FAA license for Starship Flight 3. SpaceX has successfully submitted its conclusive report to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA for short, concerning the second launch of its Starship vehicle in November of 2023. Notably, there is no significant involvement of the Sea and Wildlife Agency this time, or if the Fish and Wildlife Service is involved, it is at a substantially reduced level compared to after IFT-1. The return to flight for the Starship Super Heavy vehicle hinges on the FAA's determination that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not compromise public safety. Crucially, all requisite documentation for a new launch license for IFT-3 has been submitted, and the FAA is currently reviewing the findings, mitigation steps, and the proposed mission profile for IFT-3. Following this process, it typically doesn't take an extended period for the FAA to provide recommendations on the necessary steps before space SpaceX can proceed with the next launch. It appears that the final details are being addressed, the necessary checks are being completed, and the timing aligns well for a February launch. Elon Musk previously mentioned in November of 2023 that the third Starship vehicle would be ready for flight in the next three to four weeks after the launch of Ship 25 and Booster 9. Although this timeline didn't materialize around Christmas as initially anticipated, the potential for Starship Flight 3 to occur next month suggests a shorter waiting period compared to previous expectations. SpaceX has demonstrated its proficiency in working with the FAA and swiftly returning to the launch pad after setbacks. A notable example is the loss of a Falcon 9 rocket during a cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station in 2015. Despite the setback, SpaceX successfully returned to flight six months later, achieving the groundbreaking feat of landing the booster. Similarly, in earlier testing phases of Starship, SpaceX encountered issues resulting in the loss of several prototypes. However, the company's ability to identify and rectify these problems allowed them to resume testing. This resilience is evident in the case of the third fully integrated Starship system where SpaceX has applied lessons learned from previous challenges. SpaceX promptly identified the cause of the failure involving the flight termination system and the destruction of the second stage spacecraft. The investigation revealed that the issue was associated with venting liquid oxygen propellant near the end of the burn. This swift determination allowed SpaceX to confirm that the debris fell within the expected area in the event of a failure, demonstrating the company's commitment to thorough analysis and transparency in addressing anomalies. Flight, flight 2 actually almost made it to orbit. Um, so, uh, in fact, ironically, if, uh, if it had a payload, it would have made it to orbit, uh, because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen, and the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion. Elon Musk highlighted that the venting issue leading to the fire would have been unnecessary if the Starship had a payload, as the payload would have been consumed by the Raptor engines to reach orbit. While Musk did not provide detailed information on how the venting triggered the fire or addressed the Super Heavy stage's subsequent explosion, he expressed confidence in the upcoming Flight 3's chances of reaching orbit. Additionally, he outlined a more ambitious flight plan for the mission, indicating SpaceX's commitment to advancing Starship through rigorous testing. Well, we want to get to orbit, and we want to do uh, an, an in-space uh, engine burn uh, from the header tank and, and prove uh, the that we can re reliably deorbit. The early approval of Starship by the FAA is closely tied to NASA's Artemis program. NASA is heavily investing $4 billion in Starship and trusting SpaceX to use the vehicle for transporting astronauts to and from the lunar surface. This marks a significant step for NASA, aiming for the first crewed lunar landing since the Apollo era in 1972. The success of the Artemis program hinges on the reliability of Starship, which necessitates multiple successful flights to demonstrate its capabilities. Additionally, Starship needs to achieve the challenging task of an in-orbit refueling before embarking on missions to the moon, a feat never before accomplished. I would hope the Biden administration takes note of what is at stake here and push the FAA to not drag its feet with the next launch license, said Todd Harrison, a non-resident senior associate at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. 
a Washington think tank. NASA's Artemis program is critically dependent on Starship's development, as is the commercial space sector that would benefit greatly from the significant drop in launch costs Starship will bring. The relationship between SpaceX and the federal government, particularly the FAA, may encounter tension due to differences in expectations regarding approval timelines. SpaceX, known for its efficiency and rapid development, may find itself navigating the complexities of government bureaucracy, which often follows less streamlined processes. SpaceX tends to expect government approval will follow logical and efficient timelines, Harrison said. But government bureaucracy is anything but logical and efficient. A lawsuit filed against the FAA in 2023 by a coalition of environmental groups and Native American tribes alleged that the agency failed to fully assess the environmental impact of SpaceX's initial space launch attempt. This legal challenge is ongoing, and new claims were filed in December of 2023 following the second launch, indicating continued concerns from environmental and indigenous groups. The success of SpaceX and other other private rocket companies has contributed to an increase in regulatory scrutiny by the FAA. Traditionally, the FAA relied on the Air Force to lead regulatory efforts at Cape Canaveral. However, with the emergence of successful private companies like SpaceX, the FAA has assumed a more prominent role in overseeing and regulating commercial space activities. The growing influence and achievements of private aerospace companies have prompted regulatory authorities to play a more active role in ensuring safety and compliance within the industry. The FAA is trying to elbow their way in and get their feet in the door and has certainly insight crossing over into the bounds of authority, and has certain insight crossing over into the bounds of authority, a bigger role in the control room. Brian Mosdell, director of Florida Launch Operations for SpaceX, who had previously worked under both Boeing and ULA in their rocket programs before joining up with SpaceX, said, The growing involvement of the FAA in regulating commercial space activities has drawn mixed reactions. While some, like Harrison, express concerns about unnecessary FAA involvement, involvement, particularly in cases where it may lead to delays and complications in launch operations, there is also acknowledgement of the need for regulatory oversight to ensure public safety and address environmental considerations. Striking the right balance between facilitating efficient launch operations and addressing regulatory requirements that serve public interest is a challenge faced by rocket makers and regulatory authorities in the evolving landscape of commercial space exploration. He's not a huge fan of that development. He advises rocket makers to push back against unnecessary FAA involvement, bogging down launch operations to stop and educate people who don't really understand what's going on. Still, he says that if you had a big launch vehicle and launching from Texas or Minnesota or wherever, I could see how public interest would be served by FAA involvement if it was at the right expertise level. Now, the issue of expertise and compensation disparities between private space firms and FAA civil servants adds complexity to the regulatory landscape. Instances like SpaceX launching a rocket in contravention of the FAA despite the dispute over a weather model highlight the challenges in reconciling differing perspectives on risk assessment and safety. Balancing the need for robust regulatory oversight and fostering innovation and efficient operations remains a key consideration in the ongoing evolution of the commercial space industry. The incident involving incorrect predictions about debris after SpaceX's orbital launch attempt has raised concerns among FAA safety officials impacting their collaboration with other rocket companies. The accuracy of methodology and discrepancies in analysis, particularly with SpaceX's internal models, have led to a cautious approach. The FAA's response to relicensing SpaceX for Starship launches will be influenced by their involvement in the investigation, and achieving consensus between the regulator and the company may be challenging, given the fast-paced nature of SpaceX's operations and Musk's inclination towards iteration and speed. With SpaceX's submission of a comprehensive report on the second Starship launch, all eyes are on the FAA's review of findings, mitigation steps, and the proposed mission profile for Flight 3. 
3. The anticipation builds for a potential February launch, aligning with Musk's earlier projections. However, SpaceX's efficient approach may face challenges in navigating government bureaucracy, particularly in light of a lawsuit by environmental groups and tribes challenging the FAA's assessment of SpaceX's space launch attempts. The evolving relationship between private space firms and the FAA raises questions about regulatory oversight, with concerns expressed about potential delays and complications in launch operations. How will this dynamic play out, and what impact might it have on the broader commercial space industry? Join us in pondering these questions and exploring the intricate landscape of regulatory challenges and innovations in the ever-evolving space exploration realm with your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.